Hello, I want to talk briefly about some of the misconceptions of Marx and Weber and start getting you to compare and contrast some of their arguments. Um, that should help you with your, uh, with your essay that's due um, next Monday. Uh, I will do one follow-up lecture as well uh, to make sure that you have some sense about what to do with that paper. So um, be a little bit patient and bear with me and we'll, we'll delve into that a little bit more. I also encourage you to post to the um, discussion board for that. All right, quickly now, three misconceptions of Marx. The first is that he was against capitalism. While it's true, of course, that he's highly critical because it's exploitative, um, he's not unequivocally against capitalism. Indeed, capitalism is a necessary stage that all um, of human society needs to go through in order to reach the final stage of communism. Um, and if you read the Communist Manifesto carefully, you'll see in there several passages, right, where he marvels at the productive uh, capacity of capitalism. Um, so, again, don't think that he is necessarily uh, against capitalism in a, in a total sense. Another important thing to keep in mind about Marx, and I think it's a major misconception, is that he is in favor of equality. We say that a lot, I think, in the United States, and I think this dates all the way to the Cold War, um, where there's, there's this notion that Marx favors some kind of equality of distribution. That may be true in some of the communist regimes that came about, that there was a sense of material equality. But if you read Marx and you read him, I think, fairly, he hardly ever talks about equality. What does he talk about? Freedom. Freedom in one's labor. So um, I challenge you to read, read through Marx carefully and, and see what, he, what the bottom line is in terms of what he thinks human beings are. In the end, right, he thinks that human beings are creatures that, that labor and do so creatively and freely if they are not coerced and exploited. So that, to me anyway, is the crux of Marx's argument and really his prescription. He's hoping to see um, a society that emerges in the end without exploitation, where people do get to labor freely and creatively. One last misconception of uh, Marx is that he somehow was involved in the founding of the Soviet Union. Um, he was dead, <laughs> well dead, um, uh, during the Soviet Revolution of 1917. In fact, he died in 18, I want to say 1880 or um, somewhere, 1893 maybe. Um, so at any rate, he had nothing to do with the Soviet Union other than that he did provide some ideological um, foundation and some of the ideological basis for uh, the Soviet regime. And that's where we're going to be heading next in this class. All right. Now let me talk about some misconceptions of Marx, or I'm sorry, misconceptions of Max Weber. Um, the first is that he was in favor of Protestantism. I think if you read him again very carefully, just like you should read Marx, he's not suggesting that people should convert to Protestantism. Almost to the contrary, right? I think he sees it as a pretty strict and harsh religion. Uh, and if you read him with a fair eye, I think he is suggesting that, in fact, Protestantism leads to all this um, kind of strange, irrational behavior where we're constantly working, constantly busy. Second is that Weber is in favor of capitalism. Again, if you read him carefully, he's actually quite critical. Go through that passage about the iron cage. What's if, if I had to identify what the purpose of human beings are for Max Weber, and so contrast him a little bit with Marx. Marx thought our human nature was to labor. Weber thinks our, hum, our purpose is to make meaning of things. And it may have made meaning or made sense for Protestants to work uh, as if that your work was a calling and and to do it in an all-consuming way, but it doesn't make sense for most of us. Um, and so what's very interesting is that uh, in a way he thinks capitalism has led us um, without uh, a real sense of deep meaning, even though it made sense for Protestants, it doesn't necessarily make sense for us today where you don't have as much um, Protestantism, frankly. And that leads to a third misconception, which is that Marx um, thought, or I'm sorry, Weber thought that Protestantism is necessary for economic and political development. That's not his argument. He does suggest that Protestantism is necessary for the beginning of capitalism, 
but not its perpetuation. Once this thing gets moving, it creates kind of a life of its own. And indeed, it actually starts to undermine religious belief itself. So in a way, once capitalism starts, it starts to corrupt, if you will, those original Protestant bases. So just keep that in mind.